Hi everyone, I hope you can hear me uh, fine. And welcome, welcome to this session. Take your seats. And the idea is that by the end we should all be able to do a tower like this. So hope you are ready and with a lot of energy. Um, so I'm Gabriela Mejia, so I'm the engagement lead for ORCID. I work with uh, organizations uh, increasing the adoption and awareness of ORCID in Europe. And uh, Dulip, uh, my colleague from the Heidelberg University Library, who is a software developer and has contributed to the plugin. Um, so before I continue, I would like to know how many of you know what ORCID is. Okay, so most of you, great. Um, so I don't need to, to give you much of an introduction then, um, but the goal of ORCID is to solve the name ambiguity issue. That's actually one of the goals, and um, I'll continue later on. Um, so ORCID is a not-for-profit organization, and um, yeah, it's very important for me to, to tell you this. We have an open uh, governance. And um, we are registered as a non-profit organization in the US. That means uh, our bylaws um, prohibit uh, the organization to be sold. I just want to uh, make uh, sure that you, you know that. And uh, we provide open tools. So the ORCID ID that you or most of you know to identify researchers. We also offer APIs, and that's um, what uh, makes the plugin, the OJS ORCID plugin possible and a registry um, that you can use, organizations can use to synchronize um, research data. And uh, today we've talked a lot and heard a lot about open science um, and also uh, about inclusion. And um, for us, uh, these are also core values and um, we um, express this uh, a little bit on this uh, diagram. Um, and uh, for us, openness means also interoperability. Um, so as you can see here, um, the idea is that the researchers uh, with their ORCID ID uh, can use um, their ID and can use, um, uh, connect their ID throughout the system, uh, like uh, when submitting an article, uh, when applying for a grant or connecting the ID into their repository, um, into their CRI system, other institution, and um, to be able to uh, achieve this, we work with all uh, organizations in the research landscape. And actually the plugin that we're going to present today is a joint effort um, from PKP, the Heidelberg University Library, which is part of our German consortium, and um, uh, we collaborated as well. And yes, the, this uh, fits on the, on the publisher uh, sector. Um, so, I wanted to also um, tell you something about our community. Uh, we have more than 7 million IDs registered. And as I said before, we're a nonprofit organization. We finance ourselves through membership fees, institutional membership fees. Currently, we have more than 1,100 members uh, in more than 40 countries. And um, these members are building these integrations uh, with ORCID, meaning uh, implementing ORCID IDs in their workflows and integrating our APIs into their systems to uh, make able uh, to make this interoperability possible so that data flows from one system to another across organizations, across countries, to save the researchers time and um, to make data reusable as well. And um, I mentioned our APIs before, um, so I'm going to go into more detail now. Um, we are an open organization and um, therefore we have a public API that's open for everyone to, you, uh, to use, it's free to use. With a public API, organizations can obtain an ID and read data that is marked as public on ORCID records. Um, does everybody know what API means? 
Yes, okay, okay. Uh, so it means application programming interface, so it's basically a tool that allows you to exchange data uh, between your systems and the ORCID registry. And the public API is free to use, everybody can, can use it for free and it allows you to obtain an ID and read data on uh, ORCID records that's public. Um, our member organizations have the benefit of using the member API. Uh, this allows the same functionalities as the public API plus the functionality to add data to ORCID records or update the data that you add. Uh, and also read trusted parties' information. So on the ORCID um, record, there are three levels of privacy um, controlled by each user or each researcher. Public means the data is available to uh, everyone through the registry and through the API. Uh, trusted parties is the second level. That means that the researcher needs to authorize um, this organization to read uh, this information. And the last level is private, that means only the researcher or the user can access this information. Most of the data on the ORCID registry is uh, public, but most of the email addresses are, are marked as private. And again, we're an open organization. Uh, what we do every year is, uh, for the Open Access Week, we uh, release our public data file, which is an XML file that contains all data um, that's public on the ORCID um, records, and this is published under a CCO license. Um, so uh, the member API allows you to uh, read public and trusted parties' data, add or update uh, information and um, we have uh, another API for our consortium members or premium members that also allows to uh, synchronize information by um, sending a notification every time something changes on an ORCID record. You can register a callback URL, you will receive a PIN uh, on that uh, URL and then you'll know something changed on that record and you can uh, update or synchronize that data on your systems. And um, some information, some statistics for you to know um, the, the volume of data flowing in our registry. Currently we have uh, more than 45 million uh, of works. Um, we call it works and not publications because we consider many time of contributions, not only publications, but also preprints, software, data sets, patents, conference posters, and many more. Um, and you can see that um, there are more than 17 million unique DOIs. And um, most of this data is being added to our uh, registry by member organizations. And actually, the plugin um, that we, we will see today um, allows uh, more of this data to be able to um, get to the ORCID records. Um, and as I'm going to show you now, this is an example of this uh, interoperability uh, using the APIs between systems. Um, this is an example of an ORCID uh, record and this is an example of a publication being added to an ORCID record by the plugin. Um, and this is um, an example from um, a researcher that has authored an article uh, on a journal published by the Heidelberg University Library. And as you can see here, um, the source of the information um, is not the author herself or himself, but instead um, the journals. So for us, uh, this is also a, a way of adding trust and transparency to the research uh, uh, process. And um, as you can see there as well, um, there's a DOI uh, on, the, on the article uh, that's been pushed by the plugin. And um, we uh, integrate many different type of persistent identifiers since this also contributes to more interoperability and reusability and visibility of the research data. And 
Yes, we've um, put together some resources, uh, some links um, uh, about the, the plugin, uh, some video tutorials, and um, the plugin guide that was uh, developed um, together uh, with PKP in a virtual sprint, as Caitlin um, mentioned today. And now I'm going to um, hand over to Julie, who will explain you more about the technical details of the plugin. Thank you. Okay. Is only this mic is enough, or I would like to later go to the computer, then I mean, I will need that also. Hi, um, this is working like this, or oh, what is? Okay. As Gabriela mentioned, I work for the University Library of Heidelberg, and I will go through now how we did this um, OJS plugin. First, I will, if everybody is clear what OJS is, I think, and now, huh? I would not, <laughs> now I would not go to that detail, and I will uh, show you the plugin, and as we are always developing in a community, I also want to um, show you who has contributed from beginning to this plugin, and then after that we will go to the questions. So this is OJS, and it is a standard, and the development history specification, and the fun I will also have, I'm having some uh, demos from videos how the integration is done. This is an uh, uh, image of uh, settings from the uh, OJS plugin. OJS plug uh, ORCID plugin is a generic plugin. In it is uh, generic means it is a plugin which is uh, directly uh, interacts a lot in uh, with OJS system. And currently, we support ORCID API version 2.1. And the plugin can be configured to uh, use both the member API and the public API. Also, as Gabriela mentioned, we are having this sandbox API, and you can also configure that. And we also allow that, uh, that you, uh, you can uh, log all the communication with the API or only the errors that you can configure through the plugin. So, some historical facts. The first development of this uh, uh, ORCID uh, plugin was done by um, the University Library of Pittsburgh, and then later it was taken into public knowledge project PKP official plugin, and the Heidelberg University Library, what we did was practically the, uh, adding the support for the member API, and a lot of community members helped, and as we had here in this conference also, we had some software sprints. A lot of people contributed their ideas. Actually, developing this kind of a plugin is not the, the challenge, is not the technology. It is the people contributing and you getting the ideas. And we have communicated everything how the uh, plugin, uh, plugin communication went in the GitHub issue. Then you can, if you are interested later, you can see. And we also invite you to contribute uh, or um, give your ideas, or if you have also errors, you can write there. So this is a formal specification, what we are supporting. You can choose uh, any kind of the four possibilities what you are having. So now I have some videos. I, I have to go there, and hopefully. So it is working. This is this is how you would set up the plugin in OJS. First, you go to the settings and you have your website settings. Then you go to the plugins, and you can find this gallery in uh, this plugin in the plugin gallery. You can just choose the OK uh, pro, uh, plugin and. Here I have already installed, therefore it says I can update, but generally it would ask you to install and you just click there. And that's it for the installation. Then we can go to the uh, installed plugins and you will see it in, under the section generic plugins. Here 
here under the settings, you, now you can configure if you are using the mem, uh, sandbox uh, API uh, or the or the production API. But what we would recommend and also OK recommends is first you test with the sandbox uh, API, and uh, when everything is finished, you can apply for the public API credentials. And I have to also mention if you are using the uh, sandbox uh, API, OK allows only to use Mailinator accounts. Mailinator is a service that where you can have free email addresses. If you are also considered with your privacy and do not want to give your email address to uh, third parties, you can use Mailnets for other things also. Did you configure it here? So choose the API settings and give your credentials and you can decide if you want to send emails and you set the uh, error logging level and then that's it. The configuration is uh, simple. So the next thing, uh, next video where I'm going to show is uh, this plugin allows um, authorizing ORCID accounts for users who are insider uh, or uh, authors who are users of the uh, OJS system. That is the first uh, example that I'm going to show. So sorry, just to do that when you have logged into your profile. You have to go you, to your public profile uh, settings. Then, in, or, uh, in, uh, if you have enabled the OJS plugin, then you will see this uh, um, button to uh, to connect to your OKID ID, and you will also see first that there's a small info introduction that you can uh, read before going into the uh, pl uh, pl uh, connecting with the OKID. So after that, I will also go again back to the OKID. Then we are connecting to the OKID profile. Here you have to log in with your OKID account. Because this is uh, configuring with the Sandbox API, I am using the Mailinator account. So that's it. Then uh, what is happening in, uh, in the background is then uh, the OJ system uh, connects to the API and authorizes and gets a token and it saves in the OJS. And this green button is always a kind of a sign that uh, it is uh, that it is uh, uh, verified by OKID. So. So now I am doing a submission using this authenticated user. That's my test profile. I'm sorry. I'm. Uh, I have to wait. It, it is the it is the external author submission, not the one uh, the, the other video I will show you uh, from the uh, authorized user. I have missed the, <laughs> mixed the uh, videos. Here, what I'm doing is I am uh, adding. A, I'm inviting an external author uh, to the system using the uh, Orchid uh, plugin. So here we can configure that um, 
do I want to uh, send the authorization uh, request to the author, to the external author? And at this moment, it sends an email uh, to the author. So the user can now uh, authorize that OJ system here. What, it, what is happening in the behind is that the external author gives access for the OJS system that it can ha retrieve this token from ORCID. Then you are right, redirected to OJS. Now when you see the profile of this external uh, author, uh, you will see that he saw her uh, ORCID ID is there. Then we, are, when, then we are done with the editing of the article and now we are going to publish. Exactly at this moment, when you are publishing it, uh, it sends the metadata from OJ system to the ORCID. So when So when I go back to the ORCID page and when I refresh this uh, web page, and you will see that the article metadata is in the ORCID page. So here you see the article title and the article links and the metadata that uh, this is the um, ORCID ID membership from the University of Heidelberg and also it is shown as the source. So now I am going to show you the other video that where you uh, think that is the internal author. So So because I am already authenticated, I can just publish. So when I am refreshing it now, I will also have it is the same process. So now we have added the author and we are going to uh, go to the OJS reader interface. In the reader interface, now you are seeing that this green button that the, you, this is a ORCID, verified ORCID ID. Earlier, um, some historical background in OJS two versions, we, uh, you could add uh, ORCID IDs without verification. We, uh, with, uh, with a lot of consultation with ORCID organization and also with discussion with uh, infrastructure providers, we have de uh, decided that we do not want um, ORCID IDs not, not, that are not authenticated. And they are, we are also thinking for all the systems what we are going to I, actually, I want to answer some of the questions which, are <laughs> which can come. Uh, that we are allow, uh, we, uh, we are also thinking of how we would um, ask the authors uh, who are not in the who not authorized to uh, to send emails and uh, get their permission that we get our systems have always come verified uh, okid ids so i think that was it let me see oops uh, yes um as we always do, uh, the next steps, what we are going to do, uh, we are discussing in this GitHub uh, issue. You can have a look there. And yeah, this is again some of the resources directly connected here. 
yeah thank you very much for listening and if you have questions now mm -hmm.